Hi, everyone. Um, this Welcome to this wonderful virtual Q&A session where we're going to talk about uh, the student experience in the Faculty of Humanities. Um, my name is Netta Gordon. I am the Associate Dean for the Faculty of Humanities undergraduate, and I'm also a professor in the English Language and Literature Department, and I've been at Brock for almost 20 years. And um, my the big course that I usually teach is the first year course. So I love welcoming new students to Brock. So this is just a new and exciting way to talk about that. Um, and we've got three other people here. I'm going to turn things over uh, to David. Thank you, Netta. Hello, everybody. My <laughs> name's David. I'm a professor in the Department of Theatre, which is downtown at Marilyn I. Walker School of Fine and Performing Arts, where we have Dramatic Arts, Music, Visual Arts, and the Center for Studies in Arts and Culture. I'm a designer by trade. That means that I design costumes and sets and sometimes lights and video content for theater productions. And that's my area of research. And I joined Brock in 2004. I came from Montreal where I was making theater in the Francophone community there. And we are really excited today to have two fantastic students join us, Dea and Dylan, and can we invite Taya first to tell us a little bit about yourselves, who you are, where, where you're from, for example, and then over to Dylan, and then we'll let Netta begin with some questions. Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Taya. I'm in the Concurrent Education Program to get a Bachelor of Arts and a Bachelor of Education, and my major is English Language and Literature, and my minor is French as a Second Language, and I come from Chatham, and I'm in my fourth year now of a six-year program. Thank you. Hi, Dylan, everyone. over to you. Hi, everyone. My name is Dylan. Um, I'm also in the Concurrent Education Program. Um, my first teachable subject is Dramatic Arts, and my second teachable subject is English. Um, I'm hey. from <laughs> a small town called Fergus in the middle of um, a rural country, you could say. Um, and I'm <laughs> in my fourth year of the six-year program as well. Wonderful. Well, thank you all for being here. So um, let's start with some questions and we're going to start with something very broad, very big, very general. Um, and so feel free, Taya and Dylan, to be as wide ranging here as you want. So the big question is, why Brock? Why should why did you come here? And also, why do you think it's an interesting decision for other students to want to come here? And Taya, we'll start with you. Sure. <laughs> I came here specifically for the concurrent education program because I really wanted that major in English and the minor in French. And Brock was one of the only ones in Ontario that offered that. And I really like it because we had a lot of experiential learning. So I was able to be in a classroom in a high school in my second year. So already I had a bit of experience and was able to figure out if I really did want to be a teacher or not. Um, and I also love the campus here and that's partially why I chose it. I was able to come for the spring open house and it wasn't virtual when I came. <laughs> <laughs> so I was able to walk around the campus a bit and I loved it. It's pretty small. Everyone was really welcoming. Well, not small, but medium size. Mm -hmm. And everyone was very welcoming and the campus was gorgeous. So that's why I chose here. Wonderful. Wonderful. Dylan? Um, I chose Brock because like Taya, uh, the concurrent education program is one of the mm -hmm. strong in Ontario, but also because I have a really strong passion for both teaching and theater. So it was mm -hmm. one of the only institutions that allowed me to do both of my passions simultaneously. Right. And when I was coming to Brock, the Marilyn I. Walker School downtown was just opening. So mm -hmm. I was going to be kind of the first cohort in that yeah. new building art facility. So when I came to the fall open house, I was able to see both campuses. And I fell in love with the downtown campus. Um, so that just solidified my choice of coming to Brock. Wonderful. Thanks. Thanks, Dylan. Maybe my turn to ask a question. And I'm wondering, because you're at the downtown campus and you're situated right at the heart of downtown St. Catharines, where the, the main campus is about 12, 15 minutes away up on the Niagara Escarpment, can you tell us what does the Niagara region offer the students when you're studying at Brock? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, especially downtown. Uh, the downtown campus is situated right in the heart of the Niagara region and kind of the arts 
hub for the Niagara region. So we have lots of smaller theater companies. We have Rodman Hall Art Museum for our visual art students. Um, we have the first Ontario Performing Arts Centre basically right in our backyard, which is pretty nice. So we can go and see professional theater and professional music concerts there too. So we don't have to travel far distances to get exposed and even get employed within an industry that we're wanting to work in in the future because it's really central to our studies. Thanks for that, Dylan. Taya, do you have some observations about Niagara? Yes, so my brother is in the game program and he also was in the first year that the game program started here at Brock back in 2016. And it was special because it's half here at Brock and it's half at Niagara College. So he's also traveling between campuses, but the transportation is easy because it's only a bus away. And he was able to get the degree and the diploma and some of the more hands-on experience of the college life and some of the more theoretical experience of the university life at the same time. So Brock is really good at that um, type of dual program where you're not just at the main campus, but you're also traveling mm. to other places. Neat. That's wonderful. Thanks. Now, I'm wondering, we're talking, we've talked a little bit about the community, and I'm wondering about opportunities at the university. So maybe Dylan, um, a lot of students are really interested in getting involved in the university in this sort of professional ways or semi-professional ways. Are there those kinds of opportunities at Brock? Yeah, as a student, you get kind of bombarded with a whole bunch of different opportunities in a good way that um, <laughs> you kind of um, seek out your help. So if you're interested in getting more involved and gaining more um, professional experience within like your specific field, per se, by doing maybe like I have a friend in the visual arts program who's a student monitor. She works in the mm. art gallery. Um, so she's able to earn some extra money while doing something that she really loves. Um, I'm a tour guide on uh, campus, so I show prospective students around campus that way. So there's over, I think, a thousand on-campus jobs for students to partake in a whole bunch of different mediums that interest students, which is really fantastic. Thanks Taya? for that. Oh, David, no, you take it. <laughs> yeah, please. Taya, do you have some, some comments or some experiences about uh, experiential or work opportunities that align with your studies and your interests on campus? Yes, so I mentioned my placement in the second year, so I'll talk a bit more about that because it was really fascinating. I was able to, they set up the placement completely for me. I didn't have to choose a school. They found one that I could go to. And I went once a week and I was helping students prepare for the grade 10 literacy test since English is my first teachable. So I was getting that hands-on experience there, which was really nice. But I've also had experience with French because I did the Explore program. Right. And it's a provincial program that Brock takes part in. And I get got to travel to a French speaking place. For myself, it was Saguenay, which is very north in Quebec. And I was there for about six weeks. And I found that really beneficial because I find it's easier to learn French when you're immersed in it. So having that opportunity to go during the summer and be there and speak French the whole time was really beneficial. Right, right, thanks too. Yeah. So we, we've talked about some learning related programs. What about your life outside of the classes and the courses? Mm -hmm. Have, have you participated in some student clubs? And, and then maybe Dylan, you could tell us too about your involvement in some of those. Yeah, sure. So um, I've participated in Brock Musical Theatre. So um, I directed <laughs> um, a major production of Legally Blonde a couple of years ago at the First Ontario Performing Arts Centre. So um, the cool thing about all of our clubs on campus is that they're all student run. So everyone within um, the club from like the president of the club to, for example, in Brock Musical Theatre, the actors, directors, music director are all students. So you get to work with a range of different students from across all faculties, not specifically just within one specific program mm -hmm. too. Um, and there's lots of clubs from academic based and also interest based too. So I think there's a sandwich making club even. So if you want to add something that interests you, you can definitely find a club that uh, you'll be able to partake in on campus. Thanks for that. In, in the performing arts field, Brock Dance is a, a very big and active mm -hmm. club and, and they're very vigorous uh, Bollywood dance uh, rehearsals on campus too. And Taya, tell us about your experience with clubs. 
Yes, so when I was in my first year, there was another first year student who noticed that there wasn't an American Sign Language Club. So she actually created the Sign Language Club from scratch in her first year. And she found some people to participate and I was one of those people. And then in my second and third years, I was able to be the vice president of the club. And then last year in this upcoming year, I'm the president of the club. So that's been really exciting. It's something that's really fun to do and it's also student run. So we're helping people practice sign language in a relaxed environment and I think it goes back to what Dylan was saying there's a club for everyone and if there isn't a club for you you can make your club (laughs) that you would like to see and I've been part of the English Students Association as well and that's another great academic based club one of the things that we do Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of a tradition for the club is to host peer support essay workshops where anyone not just English majors but all students can come and visit us the executives and we take a look at their papers and help them grow as writers so yeah yeah, there's a a broad range of of clubs on campus yeah I'm very familiar with the ESA and they do excellent work and it's wonderful because it's students meeting students and it's it's a really wonderful community building exercise so Dylan I have I have a question for you which is a logistics question so one of the things that's interesting about the Faculty of Humanities is we have in fact the largest footprint uh, (laughs) Uh, at Brock University, because we have, we are the only faculty that has classes uh, up the hill and also down the hill. So I'm wondering if you can speak to how that works, <laughs> the logistics of that, and how do how do students get from one space to the other? Yeah, and that's always um, a, a worry, especially when I remember when I was coming to Brock, I was thinking, oh my goodness, how am I going to be able to go from one campus to the other? Um, mm-hmm. But as a Brock student you're really fortunate because you get a bus pass included in your tuition for the entire Niagara region. So you just get that on your student card, you just swipe on the bus and you take the bus anywhere you want, but specifically to go from the main campus to the Marilyn I. Walker campus. It runs every 15 minutes. So it's very, um, you can rely on it quite um, frequently, which is really nice. Um, So that's how I I got familiar with taking the transit uh, from both campuses, but now there's actually an app you can download to your phone. Mm -hmm. So you can actually type in your like location you're at and where you want to go and it will tell you the bus route and what buses to take, where to get off at certain stops. So it's really user friendly now. You don't have to take out the big maps or anything anymore. That's great. Yeah, that, that's a, a brilliant app. I use it too, also to get out and do the shopping, for example, mm-hmm. right? So D- Dylan, you're, you're downtown, you're on main campus. Mm-hmm. Our university residences are on the main campus. Could you tell us a little bit about that? And, and what, are there student living opportunities also downtown or elsewhere in St. Mm-hmm. Catharines? Right, so usually in first year, students tend to live in residence. It's kind of part of the first year experience that students partake in when they go to university. So all of our main residence buildings are on our main campus. Mm-hmm. Um, but we do have student um, residences downtown that aren't run by the Department of Residence, or that are run by different companies that we have an affiliation with. So those apartment buildings are called Regent, and they basically house all Brock University students and Niagara College students as well. So usually after students live in residence on main campus, they might transition downtown so they're closer to the Maryland I. Walker School if they wanted to do that. But there's lots of opportunities when you're living on main campus to be incorporated into what's called a learning living community. So um, those are specific floors dedicated to academics and interest space. So there's a concurrent education floor, there's an arts floor, there's kinesiology, accounting, um, a whole bunch of different learning living communities that you can meet students not specifically in your own program, but from other faculties as well. Th- thanks for that, Dylan. That's and cool. we have two Regent buildings, I believe, downtown. And one of the fun things about living downtown is that you're very close to the restaurants and, <laughs> and other, other diversions that downtown brings and, and also to the school. And so, for example, we have a small learning commons at the school and other study space. So you could be a student at the Goodman School or in English or in Biosciences yeah. or whatever. You can also use facilities at the school to do your work. Taya, I'd like to ask you a, a question. Sure. I'm thinking first year, what what can a student expect? I've I've been four years in a high school. I've got really, really comfortable. I know the community. I know where to find things. What would you tell a student? What should they expect in their first year classes? 
Hmm, that's a good question. I think I would first tell a student not to worry too much because I think I was very worried going into my first year at university, but it it's different than high school, but in a great way because you have a bit more freedom. You have more choice in the classes you want to take. You're meeting a lot of people who are in those same type of interests that you're interested in. Um, and I think one of the things I was worried about was being in large classes. But the great thing about Brock is that almost every professor and every TA has office hours. So when I was uncertain about an essay or an assignment or I didn't understand something or wanted to talk something through, I was able to go to office hours, meet my TA or meet my professor and talk things through. So it's still a, a personal uh, experience, even though it's sometimes a bit of a large classroom in first year. So it's, yeah. still, it's still really great. Thank you. And can I pick up on that? Uh, tell us, what, what's been the average size of your class experience, for example, maybe in first year, and has that changed across your successive years of study? Yes, it's changed a lot. I think first year, my biggest class was 200 students, okay. and that was the biggest class I had ever because the class sizes <laughs> decreased a lot after that. Right. In second and third year, my English classes were about 50 people, 40 to 50 people, and then in fourth year, it's capped at 20 people in the fourth year uh, seminars. So that's a lot nicer too, because I really get to know everyone who's in English and in the classes. And usually it's the professor facilitating those seminars in fourth year as well. So I got to know my professors even more. Thank, thank you, Taylor. Does that compare well, Dylan, to your experience or is yours slightly different? Um, mine's a little different um, because the drama program is quite, uh, it's a small knit community. Um, so right from first year, our classes are basically our cohort um, that are in the program. So you get really get to know all of the drama students for in the entire four years because we kind of travel throughout the degree together. But once we start concentrating in different concentrations, so there's a performance concentration, production and design, as well as drama and education and applied theater. So once we start navigating and choosing our path it, pathways, our classes can become more smaller. Uh, but our larger theory-based classes is when we're all back together as one family. But going to like a concurrent education, one of our education classes, they tend to be quite large because our cohort is larger that way. Um, but then when we're going um, through our upper years, like Taya mentioned, they do start capping classes um, to kind of um, facilitate more one-on-one -on -one individual learning with the professor. So you get to meet more students um, and grow your relationships that way, as well as your working professional relationships with your professors too. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Now, both of you um, knew what you wanted to do when you came in, you're concurrent students, but I'm wondering, um, just in, you know, you've been here for a long time and you have lots of friends and what, what kind of flexibility is there? A lot of students, I know high school students are worried that they, once they make their choice, once they tick that little box at uh, UAC, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> They're committed. <laughs> so I'm wondering what you can tell students about the sort of the, the ability to sort of change your mind, change majors, check out other programs, that kind of stuff. Taya, do you want to start? Sure. I, I had one of those moments. I, oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, sort of. I had French as my second teachable. Um, and in concurrent education, to have a second teachable, it's only three credits um, versus a minor, which is four credits. So I wasn't sure if I wanted to leave it as just a second teachable mm -hmm. or if I wanted to change it into a minor just in case I decided not to become a teacher. Mm -hmm. And I did end up deciding to change it into a minor and it was very easy since it was only one credit less than it needed to yeah. be. So I was able to add it into my schedule and adding it as a minor was a very simple process. I only had to fill this simple form with my name and my student number and didn't have to do a survey or anything like that. So <laughs> it was easy. It was easy to switch it around a bit. Okay, Dylan? Yeah, I think that is a common thought process because even I, in my fourth year, I'm thinking like, do I really want to do this for the rest of my life? What do I really want to do? <laughs> that because you get exposed to so many unique and different things that you don't think are out there or you're able to do as a career when you're at an institution that you're like, hmm, I could really see myself doing that instead of this. So mm -hmm. I think that's a common question. And we have what's known as academic advisors. So mm -hmm. 
Um, each faculty have specific academic advisors and they're kind of like high school guidance counselors. Um, okay. So you can meet with them and they'll be able to walk through different pathways or ways that if you wanted to go from a humanities to a business or vice versa, they'd be able to work out a pathway to hopefully have some of your credits you've been taking in your first year to transfer over so you don't have to play too much catch up. But there are spring and summer courses that are offered too. So if you do need to have an extra course taken in the spring, you could do it virtually um, at home or uh, as a two week intensive on the campus too. Mm -hmm. I, I do, I think it is really important for students to know that you're supposed to change your mind in university, right? You're supposed to be exposed to new things. I changed my major three times. <laughs> yeah, I did. And it was, and it did because I had never heard of some of the subjects, not really. I didn't really understand what it would mean to study those subjects intensively. And it was a, it was a wonderful, wonderful experience to be able to sort of move around and explore and grow as a person. Yeah. Netta, can I ask what your subjects yeah. were? Um, I started as a political science major. Okay. Um, and then I, in first year, I realized that I, I'm, I missed drama because I went to a arts high school. And so I picked up a drama minor and then I decided that I liked drama better than political science. So I decided that I would become a drama major. And then I realized that I really missed English too. <laughs> so I ended up with a double major in drama and English and I did get my minor in political science. So, wow. and then I became an English professor. So, you know, like you never know. You never, you never know. know. Exactly. <laughs> Netta, would you like to pick up the next question? Sure, I think we're, absolutely. we're thinking about opportunities away yeah. from the university. I'm, I'm, I mean, Taya, you already mentioned um, your opportunity in Quebec. I'm wondering if there's anything else that either of you can tell us about opportunities that students have to study abroad or other kind of other experiential sort of unique, distinctive learning opportunities that I think, you know, are outside the classroom. Yes, yeah, so I had I've had a couple of interesting ones in my English classrooms. Um, one of my professors organized a conference in Toronto, and he was able to work it out with the university. So they paid for our transportation if we wanted to go to that conference, and it was over a weekend. So I was able to go and take part and listen to the speakers, and that was an incredible experience. Yeah. It was really fun. And another professor, I was in a very small class and we were talking a little bit about the history of St. Catharines. And so she organized a tour of the Niagara region and we went around St. Catharines and Fort Erie and Niagara on the lake and learned a bit more about the local history. So there are definitely opportunities to get out of the classroom, even in things like English, where you think it was mostly theory. It's also very experiential um, and there's still chances to get out and see different things. Wonderful. Thanks. Dylan? Do you have any comments? Yeah, um, well, specifically in the drama program, um, students have the option to take classes at both the Stratford Festival Theatre and the Shaw Festival Theatre. So I, those are two really unique experiential learning opportunities that students can take because they're learning from industry professionals. So if you really want to become an actor or an actress, you can really get trained and go through their brain and pick their brain about their journey to become an mm -hmm. actor and things like that. But there's also unique reading week opportunities that students can mm. So I had a friend who went to Peru and Guatemala over her reading weeks. And she went with a group of students from Brock, from all different faculties, and they were building schools in both of those countries. Wow. Um, it's a fun way to get a, an extra credit if you want to <laughs> also go somewhere nice and warm during our reading <laughs> We've had uh, a number of students come through our programs too who take advantage of doing international mm -hmm. studies abroad, for example, and their th third year is a really good time to do that. Yeah. I, I know I've had students who have studied it in France, in Germany, in England, in yep. Scotland, in the States, and we continue to develop some new relationships with countries around the world. So I know we've had some students come up to the Marilyn Walker School from Mexico, from yep. South America, from Brazil, and we've almost always had students come from Bermuda or uh, yep. Trinidad and Tobago. And I'm, I'm very hopeful that in a couple of years time, we'll be able to run some classes down in Trinidad and Tobago because of our, our recent uh, new uh, contracts and relationships with them. Yeah, That's we've right. got long, long history with the Caribbean. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. 
Um, okay, so back to, I hope you don't mind, the, the issue of first year, because in many ways, the audience for this video uh, are incoming first year students. Yeah. And I'm wondering if you could give them some advice. I mean, I can give them advice and David can give them advice and academic advisors can give them advice. But I, I think that the best advice is always from someone who has, is closer to the experience. <laughs> so I'm wondering if you could think of what pieces of advice uh, you would give to incoming first year students. I think, I, sure, <laughs> I mentioned earlier that I would tell myself to relax if I could go back in time. And I still think that's mm -hmm. my biggest piece of advice because I think everyone's a little nervous when they're coming out of high school and going into university and they're not exactly sure how things are going to work. Um, but it is a very enjoyable experience. First year was one of my favorite years, especially living in residence because you get to meet so many people and you get to do residence games and you get to have movie nights in residence and you hang out in the lounge with your friends so there are a lot of opportunities to meet people and talk to people and same with all the clubs and all the different opportunities that Brock offers as well you get to find people who are interested in the same things that you are whether that's playing board games or towing sign language or talking about French or anything I think there's a cooking club that we mentioned <laughs> so there are so many opportunities to talk to people and I would also recommend talking to your professors in your first year and getting to know them because it really helps set you up well for success academically but also for the rest of your program um, because then you kind of know the professors that you're going to have later on and you can feel comfortable asking them for advice or for um, clarification on things that you might not understand. Dylan what about you what advice would you give to first year students? Wow yeah I think I would say I always say because I ask lots of questions all the time. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I feel like I ask too many questions, but mm -hmm. I don't think there is enough questions to ever be asked. Um, so I would, I always say, don't feel like you can't ask questions. Um, ask as many questions as you want, especially if you're confused about an assignment or the content that you're learning. It's better to get clarity on that before moving forward. And because I've found like a lot of the course content is kind of inter um, integrated together. So if you don't understand the one concept, it might make it a little difficult to understand the next. So ask as many questions like Taya said, go to your professors, get to know them because sometimes professors are doing independent research projects and they might want some students to be involved in that so if you're interested in research you could do that specifically in the drama department um, I was really fortunate enough to work with Jillian um, who's one of the associate professors whose um, kind of interest is directing and dramaturgy mm -hmm. Um, being able to work side by side with her during the one act festival really allowed me to hone in on my passion of directing. So um, there's opportunities for students to be able to work on main stages or major productions that way if you really get to know and work well with those faculty members too. Wonderful. All great things to share with our incoming students. Maybe let's shift gears a little bit and I'm, I'm interested still in about campus life. But how, how would you describe it? What's, what's the quality of it? What does it feel like? Mm -hmm. And what surprised you about it? Um, was there, was there a, a negative thing? Something that you, know, you were a little disappointed to, to find out about, but you, you figured out how to make it a good thing? Tell us about the integrating into campus life, mm -hmm. coming from whether it's a big city away or a small town, and what that change might be like. Taylor, do you want to start? Sure. I came from a pretty small town. I'm from Chatham, like I mentioned, and it's only about 40 to 50,000 people there. Mm -hmm. And so coming to Brock and coming to St. Catharines was definitely a really big change. And I wasn't sure how I would like it being around so many people and being in such a big city. And I was worried maybe I'd feel a little overwhelmed by the sheer number of the population. But I found it wasn't really like that. I'm Brock is kind of a medium-sized campus, so it's big mm -hmm. enough that you can meet a lot of new people, but it's also small enough that when you meet someone, you won't never see them again. You won't <laughs> see them in your classes and in the clubs that you join. So I felt like it was easier to form a community and form a family here at Brock because everyone is so close-knit to each other. And I found the sports really helped with that as well. I don't play mm -hmm. any sports, but Brock has their um, basketball leagues and their hockey leagues and 
They have volleyball leagues, so going to visit those also helped me feel more part of the campus spirit. And I think that's what surprised me most about Brock is that close-knit feeling. Great. It's lovely. And Dylan, what about your experience? Yeah, like I mentioned earlier, um, your department or your faculty or even your program is so family oriented, like Taya was mentioning, like you get to spend a lot of your time with them, especially within my the drama program that I'm in. I got, got to know all of my 50 program members, as one could say, really well. And they become like your best friends because you spend all your time with them. You get to know them from first year for four years. Um, like Taya, I'm, I was coming from a small town, smaller than Taya's, just under 20,000 people. <laughs> coming to Brock, it was a little bit of a shockwave being that there's public transit, you have to navigate <laughs> things like that. So, um, but there's a whole bunch of resources within the university that you can take mm -hmm. that um, like A to Z learning services. Mm -hmm. Part in, uh, especially getting to know how to write an academic based paper for a university setting. I thought I knew how to write a good thesis statement, but then if you take those courses, you'll be able to better yourself, which is nice. And they're all free, which is even better. Um, but yeah, like you walk on campus and you see people that you've had were in your classes in first year and now you're in fourth year and you still know each other's names and you say hi to each other and you're in the hallways. And if you're ever lost, you can ask almost anyone and they'll be yep. able to help you with um it's not like you're bothering them they're like oh yeah let me help you or i'll walk you to that space so it's really like a close-knit com community on the main campus as well as the downtown campus yeah th thanks for all of that we, we are a smaller city and and we enjoy mm -hmm. that but it's also real important right to get ourselves into larger cities and 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 your and my field dylan and theater for example we run field trips. We take our students into downtown Toronto because it's it's one of the the world's best English language theater producing centers in the city, and also yeah. to the Shaw Festival and Straw. And our other departments do the same, run the field trip. So we we've been talking about our smaller communities and and the feel for that. But know too that we are very much keeping an eye on what's going on in the larger metropolitan centers, whether it's to Toronto or Buffalo, and we've yeah. had some international trips in visual arts, for example. I really enjoyed joining their trips to Pittsburgh or New York, for example, over the years. Dylan, I'm wondering if you have a question for the Associate Dean, for Professor Netta Gordon, because <laughs> what an interesting time of the world we are all sharing right now, and we're looking forward to September. Yeah, so I have a question, and I think everyone especially the incoming students yeah. will be wondering what September will be like, um, if there will be courses running in September or even what those courses would look like sure. for students. This is the question, right? This is the question and it's, it's so important. And it's so important that we keep thinking about the answers to that question. So I, I was just in a big meeting this morning with all the other associate deans and with the registrar and with the vice provost and the big message that um, we all discussed is absolutely there's going to be classes running, right? Absolutely. Um, and Brock, like every other university in Ontario, is going to be following the best advice from the province, from Ontario Public Health. Um, and for the most part, Ontario universities are also gonna be talking with one another, right? We're, we're, we are also a close-knit community of universities. It's an incredible system, the Ontario system. Um, and so the question now is, what will fall look like? We're gonna be open, um, but what will that look like? Um, and I think what's, speaking specifically for incoming students, right? I think the most important thing will be onboarding, will be transitioning into the university. I usually, when I do my big uh, orientation session, I talk about the university being like a foreign country that you have to get a map to and you have to learn the language and you have to learn how to negotiate this brand new space um, because it's not just a bigger high school, right? A university is a unique, um, a really unique and very special space. And now that's gonna be a little bit more difficult because you can't just walk through the hallways and ask someone, cause that's the ideal, right? So um, a couple of things, um, there's gonna, there's a lot of focus on making sure that 
the very best people are going to be who are teaching uh, incoming classes, first year classes, um, and the training for either fully online classes or hybrid style courses is has already started. Like those workshops have already started just in case, right? Um, we're not going to wait to like, oh, <laughs> mid-August to, to, to try to get that expertise um, up and running. We're making, we, we're very lucky in the humanities, the faculty, we already have the Center for Digital Humanities um, and your brother Taya is part of that if he's in the game program. Um, so we have expertise right here in the faculty and uh, people are being incredibly generous with their time. Uh, people from the Center for Pedagogical Innovation are running faculty uh, specific workshops for our instructors. So that we really want, because we really want um, any sort of first year experience to still be exciting, to still be experiential as much as possible to be embodied so there's all and there's all kinds of like really creative neat cool stuff that's emerging so even this spring for example um there's a there's a, a an online sculpture course that has right. been developed right i mean how cool is that <laughs> and in the dramatic arts department um uh instructors have developed are starting to develop an acting course which is going to run in an online, sometimes asynchronous, sometimes synchronous environment and, and creative writing courses. And really people are not, um, instructors are not resisting this. They're embracing it as new opportunities to, um, to try to think about pedagogy in new 21st century ways. Although we do want to get back to that small embodied experience. I mean, I think that's important is that, um, as much as we want to do, uh, be nimble and be flexible and being, you know, and and be supportive. There's tons and tons of support systems that are being added. Um, that's all sort of like we we're just sort of like prolonging the time where we get to know each other face to face. Yeah. Um, so I think it's going to be a, a very interesting year. <laughs> but I think that what first year incoming students need to know is that we get it and we are not going to throw them into um, sort of uh, I mean, I have I have students in in high school <laughs> right now. We're not going to throw them into sort of like generic online experiences. Everything is being created fresh. Everything is being created by people who care. And there's going to be a ton of support. And I, I should mention um, a very specific course, which we developed last year. It's called Huma 1P50, the master student. And it's a four credit a university skills course that anybody can take. It's for humanity students, but like anybody can take it. Um, and it's going to be taught next year by the other associate dean. So we're making sure that we have like our top people in there. She's a professor in the visual arts department and she's going to be running the course and it's going to have like tons and tons of little sections. So there's going to be a lot of opportunities to ask questions and have somebody on the other side answering those questions. And that's going to be like teaching uh, helping students with that transition from high school to university and, and introducing to them to this wonderful, spectacular, unique foreign country and all the vocabulary and all the skills that go along with that. So that's what, that's what we're planning for. Um, and I'm, I would, I, the message that I'd want to send to incoming students is that we hear you and we know you're anxious and we're anxious too. But we will do all that we can to continue um, developing that sense of community and mutual support. So that's my that's my answer. Th thanks, Vernetta, uh, and thanks for talking about some of the courses in development. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are we are approaching this as an anomaly, Dylan. We we expect yeah. to be all together out the other end, and we don't know yes. when the end will happen, but we're, we're planning for that and looking forward to it. And so we're all busy with our course development now. Faculty are so busy right now as we're finishing our marking and we're finishing exams. We're now developing adaptations of existing courses or maybe some new courses. So you will have a full roster of opportunities. Absolutely. And for, for example, if you're coming in and you're thinking you want to study performance and dramatic arts, uh, we will already have had a course running this summer 
as Netta was discussing, for example, mm -hmm. that we will continue to improve upon so we're ready for the September cohort. In my area of teaching and set and costume design, I, we are asking the question, how am I going to teach costume design? Well, I can tell your head of wardrobe is on it and we're going to have a really fantastic yeah. solution. I'm really excited about this sculpture course. 205 yeah. in the Department of Visual Arts. So they normally run it across the spring and summer, but because of the current situation, the professor is modulating this into online delivery. And I, I'm really looking forward to a very yeah. lovely thing. I'm going to just ask my last question and then we'll ask Netta to wrap up our conversation mm -hmm. together. So this is both for you, Taya, and for Dylan. Last question, you've given us some advice before and it's about the question of transition specifically. Yeah to make that successful transition, to make it enjoyable too, to have fun, to, to grow, to look after yourself, but to have courage and, and go forward. What would you say? What would you say to a new student who's coming to join us at Brock? Teo, would you like to begin? Sure, I can do that. I think academically, I would say the most important thing is to be organized and to keep track of everything that's happening, even if that means making a study schedule when exam season comes around. Just because you have so many, you have five courses, you have so many assignments and tests that you're trying to juggle and having them all organized can help you um, be more successful, I find. But also, I would say being aware of all the resources that are also available. Mm -hmm. So there's the A to Z learning services, which Dylan mentioned, and those are incredibly helpful. There are librarians who will help you do research and find books from the shelves if you can't find them. There is mental health resources in our mental health and wellness center that you can always visit as well. Um, so there are a lot of different resources available for people to use. If you find you are struggling academically or socially or in any way, there's someone you can reach out to and they'll help you along. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Taya. And Dylan, your thoughts? Yeah, I, I was thinking similar things to Taya, especially um, first year can be a little overwhelming. I remember coming in and thinking, oh my goodness, what am I getting myself into? But um, at the beginning of each of your classes, you get a full outline of everything that's due, all of your assignments, your readings. And I made a huge calendar of when everything was due so I could visually see what was coming up next. So I think planning it out really helps you stay on top of things and will then mm -hmm. allow you to have some free time to join in clubs and intramurals or join in Brock Musical Theatre or do some acting on the side if you wanted to do that or even get a part-time job because I think the most important thing is that what I struggled with was getting out of my academics all of the time because you think that you need to study 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 and read all the time but taking care of your mental being as well as your physical being is just as important absolutely so, going to the gym, even if you don't know how to work out, there's people there who will be able to help you. Um, taking part of the mental health counseling, both on the main campus as well as the downtown campus, you have options to do that too. And even speaking to your professors. All mm -hmm. the professors that I've had in my four years thus far have been super supportive if I needed a couple days of an extension to finish a paper or yeah. speaking about um, a course that's coming up that I really wanted to take and how can I um, better myself for that specific course and things like that. So speaking to your professors right in your first year, like Netta, you were my first year English professor. <laughs> like I would say we have a really good rapport. Like I, I really enjoy like having those conversations with professors because they're professional professional professors, as I call them. <laughs> so they have the vast of knowledge that will be able to, you can pick their brain about certain things and they're there for you. So don't feel like they're against you. They are yeah. always on your side. And if I could add to that, especially during the pandemic, it we came out of the blue, I think, where we did end up doing our in-class, um, did end up stopping our in-class activities. But professors adapted really well to that and were very supportive. They were able to modulate different deadlines and they were aware of our mental stress and they were definitely very there for us. So they're always there as a support and I think it will occur whether we're in person in the campus next year or whether we're online, you'll still be able to have that same field of support around you. Well, this has been delightful. It really has. Mm -hmm. It's been a wonderful thing to be excited uh, about. It's exciting to think about incoming students. Like, I love it. 
I love <laughs> thinking about the beginning of the year. And so, you know, it's been a bit of a, a, a difficult couple of months, but it's wonderful that to have you here, Taya, to have you here, Dylan, and just to hear your enthusiasm about your time here and also just like projecting that enthusiasm forward. So I thank you both. And I thank you, David, for thank participating. You. Thank you. And I, 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 I'm now I'm looking at the camera. Um, I'm that, so I'm reaching out to all the people who are listening. I want you to know that what Tan Dillon said is true, that you can ask us anything. And so if you have any questions, if this video has uh, sort of provoked, produced any questions, um, my email will be somewhere in this presentation or linked to this presentation and you can ask me anything. Okay, yeah. thanks very much, everyone. Cheers. Thank Bye. you. Thank so you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.